All right. Well, Jack, thanks for being with us today. Yeah. Really course. excited to have you here. It's been, gosh, how long has it been since I've seen you? Probably like six, seven years. Five, six years, yeah. something like that. Long time. Yeah. Good to be back. Been doing on this Maui. a while, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're older now. We're not old. We're just older. Yeah. yeah exactly. I like that. I like how, that. How do you guys know each other? Uh, we have a mutual friend, one of my roommates from Boulder, Colorado. Go Buffs. Let's go. Um, Alex Iwanchuk is one of Jack's good buddies. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Good friend lives two blocks from, from me. And so when I came last time to, to Mallory a long time ago, introduced me to Pat and was like, hey, my buddy's a new realtor out here. And look at him now. He's got his own podcast and business and crushing. So it's big time. Big time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one's right here with me. Um, Sweet. So, yeah, well, I mean, we just wanted to have you out, Jack. You do, you've you done some great things um, for, well, tell us a little bit about your background. I mean, yeah, concierge sure. auctions, yep. what's that all about? So I didn't have a real estate background, but I found this company in, like, 2014, yeah, 10 years ago, kind of fledgling, um, was born out of the financial crisis in 2008, had been around for a couple of years, maybe 10, 15 people working for him. And it was kind of like, hey, do you like high-end property? Do you want to make a ton of money? And do you like to travel? And it was like, check, check, check. So 10 years later, I'm sitting here now after this company's been acquired by Sotheby's, the oldest auction house in the world, but we built it up from kind of nothing to something. Yeah. Um, and I've been in kind of two different sales roles, but really focused on selling individual high-end properties across the world and now more so focused in Colorado and Hawaii. Um, okay. For no particular reason other than I love Hawaii and I yeah. love working here and I live in Colorado. So they kind of have this, you know, intrinsic link to each other for whatever reason. I mean, you're nice. you know, yeah. a Colorado yeah. buff yeah. and now you're here. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's been a crazy run of, of 10 years of doing this now. And, and, you know, we've sold properties in like 46 of the 50 states and 38 countries and setting records of like 50, then 75, then $150 million properties sold at auction. Um, so it, it really has grown into this fully fledged, you know, worldwide known entity. And all we do is high end luxury property sales, typically residential sales. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's the reason why we're talking because we work in the same arena, um, for for the same kind of clients and I work with a ton of realtors. For sure. For sure. Um, so how'd you end up there? I mean, tell us a bit about yourself, Jack White. Um, where'd you, you know, where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? And then how did you kind of end up in this field? Grew up in Jersey, so hour outside New York City, um, which was great, and went to college in Connecticut. Didn't really have a penchant for real estate, but was always kind of sales-oriented, very much a people person, not an analytical type. Um, and after college said, I'm going to move to Colorado. Um, I love snowboarding. I, you know, it was, it was 2009, so there's no jobs in New York City. Didn't really have an interest in living in a cubicle. And moved west and did the sales thing for a couple of years in uh, sports marketing and um, and like marketing agency work, digital agencies. Got tired of it, realized there was no money in it, found a LinkedIn job posting from concierge auctions. And, nice. and it, you know, it was those three things that I, that I mentioned earlier. And so it was a natural fit for who I was at the time. Yeah. Spent three and a half years basically as a road warrior for a month at a time in a different city from like Jackson Hole to Portland, Oregon, to New York City, to L.A., to Florida, wherever, um, wherever we had a property and learned the business on the ins and outs and sold a ton of real estate. And then after I knew the platform really well, kind of moved over into the business development side, finding properties to sell at auction, negotiating with sellers, educating them on the process, getting them signed up, guiding them through the whole process um, with our team. And I've been doing that for like six, seven years now. So that's primarily what I do is I'll go out into the market and find a property that's a good, good fit for us and, and help the seller to understand, you know, how it works and, and then hopefully sign them up and get it sold. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so I'd love to hear, you know, we know this is a phenomenal tool that is available to sellers, um, but it's not necessarily a tool for every seller, right? Sure. Um, you guys serve this really important niche. Um, you know, I've been privileged enough to work with you guys way back. I think that was like 2012 on McKenna Sunset, um, little res condo project in McKenna, just kind of saw the inner workings. You guys are a well-oiled machine. And this was quite a while ago. Mm -hmm. That was kind of, you know, when you guys were just kind of getting rolling with this thing. Um, you know, now you've evolved into... Sotheby's acquired you not that long ago, a couple years ago? Three years ago. Yeah. yeah. So we were independent for a long time um, and kind of always interested in selling the business, at least our ownership sure. was. 
And you know, th there's no more perfect to fit than the oldest auction house oh, in yeah. the world. Yeah. So you have that validation of okay, they've been selling art and cars and jewelry and antiques since 1744. You know, yeah. older than the United States itself. Yeah. Um, and Anywhere. So they came together. Anywhere is the biggest real estate brokerage holding company in the world. They're public. They formed a joint venture. They bought our company. Um, and, and so that's been unbelievable. But yeah, you're right. It's not for everyone. Um, auction really is for luxury. Right. If you can comp something, if you can figure out what it's worth, as long as it's priced right, you're probably going to be able to sell it within some reasonable time frame. For sure. If you get a property that really is truly incomparable, it's like a Picasso. You can't compare a Picasso to another Picasso or to a Monet, or to a Monet, and so on and so forth. Right. So really the thinking is, you know, what is market value for, for a home of that caliber? You could get asked 10 people, and you get 10 answers, and none of them are wrong. It's just what it's worth to those individual 10 people. For sure. So finding a meeting of the minds where you find the seller who really is motivated to get it sold and listen to what the market has to say is kind of a rarity. Everyone has their price. They'll hopefully get it, and sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Um, and then the buyers that exist in the market, you know, that's the demand. We try to aggregate all the demand out there that exists to bring them together and have them compete and determine what it's worth and get it sold. For sure, for sure. And I mean, you guys have to have one of the most valuable databases in the real estate industry. I think it's so probably I know that's, the most. It's, yeah. It's a million it's people now. million people now. And now we've got the Sotheby's wow. Auction House okay, database so you have their layered data. on top. Oh, my gosh. So anyone okay. who's bought a Picasso or yeah. a Ferrari or, you know, a giant diamond, we're marketing to them now yeah. also. So, yeah, that's about a third of, of any, any bidders that register for an auction, a third of them come from that database. Wow. So you're not going to get that unless you hire our firm. Exactly. Um, a local realtor is your best bet to try to get it sold first. If that doesn't work and you want to add on an additional layer of marketing and exposure that just you guys will never have access to because you're not me, yeah. that's, that's the, you know, one of the huge benefits. Yeah, that's, that's the value right there. Yeah, that, it's that reach for yeah. sure. And then the auction itself creates this urgency and fear of loss that you also don't have access to. When you slap a date on a listing saying, it's going to sell on this date, oh, you yeah. better do something. I mean, I just experienced this on McKenna Road with, with two guys who were going to make an offer on this property, dragged their feet, didn't do anything. Now they're signed up to bid. Yeah. And one of them is probably going to win it. We'll see. Um, creates it, that urgency. Yeah, 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 for sure. So those are kind of the two big differentiators, and we're great at marketing. And yeah. Then, you know, there's plenty of people who are good at marketing, but the who you're marketing to, that's huge. It's, it's a million for people. Sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, we've got a great database, but, you know, it's... <laughs> it's not Picasso. A million, a mi a million Picasso, of the uh, so wealthiest people yeah. around the world is... Yeah. It, there's huge value there. Yeah, it's a big feather in the cap, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. So well, let's, let's jump right into that McKenna property. You want to... Yeah. Uh, you want to take us through it and kind yeah. of give a... Kind yeah, we were just down there the other day. We had a lovely sunset soiree there. Thanks for having us. That was, for sure. That was yeah. a successful broker's open. Yeah. I'd say. I think so. when you Beautiful have a property spot. that's that significant, it's like, you know, the, the who's who are going to come out for it, which is great. But uh, it's really special. I mean, it's it's um, not every day that we get to sell like a really prime A-plus kind of property like that. It's really unique in that it's four individual homes on a double lot oceanfront with with its own kind of beach that you can't really access from anywhere else and then the public beach next door but the spot and the and the foliage and the privacy and everything is is unbelievable um it's like 1.43 acres uh about 6400 under roof and is owned by a famous guy um he started a m records his name was jerry moss passed a year or two ago um family you know they're not really as passionate about hawaii as, as he was so it was kind of his legacy right. and he built it from nothing you know when he bought it in 1977 to what it is today spent a ton of time there hosted all kinds of celebrities i mean I, the, if the walls could speak i can only imagine what keith richards would have to say oh, yeah. you know or paul, oh, yeah. paul mccartney no, sounds or like the, diana the ross or whoever there. Yeah. Um, and so it's really special in that it's kind of a compound where you have these four homes and you can keep individual families or friends kind of in their own private spaces. And then when you want to congregate in the main house or the common areas, that's great. But, you know, you can go to sleep in your own home. Things are quiet. Wake up for breakfast. Don't bang on the door until 930 a.m. or I'll see you on the beach or whatever. Sure. Right. Yeah. Perfect um, for entertaining, having guests in the town. Everyone has their own space. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's truly one of the more unique offerings we've seen in McKenna. We've seen a lot. Yeah. You know? So 
um, that beach access too. I mean, sandy beach access hard to come by. Mm-hmm. Um, and you got these staircases that go right down to yeah, it. So even if you're yeah. 75, you can get on the beach. Yeah, real yeah, easy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So much different from the typical kind of rocky ocean front, which we have a lot of. Yeah, we're up on a bluff yeah. where you can't even get down to the beach. Yeah. 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 So very special when it comes to that. You know, the the unique part of it is there's not one big fat home where you know you have a family with young kids, you want to keep them close. It's kind of tough to yeah. do because you don't have six thousand feet under one roof right. you've got it across four different roofs there's a couple options the you know two of the two of the homes could house you know three or four or five people i would say for sure yeah that one yeah. at the top for sure yeah it's right. like seven bedrooms total yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. Sleep plenty of people bedrooms. but yeah, yeah. it's just unique in terms of you know how you, how you want to house your guests or your family yeah. or right. both so that appeals to a specific range of people. Um, if there was one big house on that piece of land, I bet it would have been sold already. But it's just tough right. to find that right. that person. And who knows, you know, in terms of redevelopment, I don't want to speculate on what you could do. Right. Yeah. But the, the land alone is probably worth 15 to $20 million. Yeah, acre and a half, Sandy Beach front, McKenna. Two TMKs. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got two lots. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of value. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that one's been on the market for about nine months, you know, yep. with a good realtor, yep. and and she's had some interest, and they were close to selling it um, to someone really famous back in the day. Decided not to sell it, held on to it, got relisted. Um, had talked to us for a little while, and and the ownership entity decided that okay, it's time to do this. Let's force these people to the table, yeah. create some competition, um, and let's sell it at auction. Nice. So uh, so that process started a couple weeks ago where we started marketing it. Um, today, the auction went live at $18 million versus a list price of $33 million. Right. You know, list price is subjective yeah. for these properties. Yeah, um, for sure. But, uh, but $18 million is certainly a really good value. Yeah. Um, so you can still bid through August the 15th, and that's kind of how the process works, this initial bidding period where we market the home, we sign people up, we get some bids before the auction. And then the auction goes live, and it takes two weeks for all the bidding to conclude. And most of it happens at the end of those two sure. weeks. Last day, yeah. But people can, can sign up and call me and say, right. Jack, I see it's on the market for, for 18 now instead of 33, and I'm not a buyer at 33, but I am at 18.5. Yeah. So let me jump in. Right. What do you need? Right, right, um, right. So there's a significant percentage of time when we sell properties to people who sign up the day before the auction ends. Um, or a couple days before or, or, or during the auction, you know, at the, at the last minute itself. Um, yeah, because they can see the live bidding, the bidding status, right? So they can see what the high bid is currently, right? And it's kind of psychological so, where people yeah. will say to themselves, okay, it's listed at 33. I don't know what it's going to sell for. Probably right. too much for me. I'm not interested. It's a waste of time. And then I can go to them and say, okay, the auction is now open. The price is $18 million. It's going to sell for sure. Are you sure you're not interested? Right. And that becomes very real because exactly. it's pretty easy to understand. There's you know, not a lot of psychology in that or conclusions people can jump to. Yeah. Um, so you know, the messaging is if you're interested at $18 million and a dollar, sign up. Right. right. See sounds, what like, happens. sounds like eBay a little bit. Yeah. How it, at least I mean, the it process is. of it's when it gets to the very end and then it starts to get, it probably will get a little crazy. And, yeah, yeah, one yeah. would hope. I mean, yeah. I can tell you that it absolutely could sell for $18 million. The sellers are locked in at that number. Yeah. And, and conventional wisdom and experience would tell you that it'll go higher. Yeah. But how much higher? I don't know. Right. You know, could it be nineteen million? Could it be twenty five? Sure, but it could be eighteen million, and yeah. the, you know, it's really like you can't win if you don't play the game. That's right. So sure. you know, the answer is no if you don't ask. Like all this stuff is kind of my favorite. You know, some of my favorite catchphrases, but they ring true. Like I've had people disappointed after these auctions because they didn't jump in, um, and there's nothing you can do. Property sold. Like, oh, I would have paid that. Yeah, for sure. That that or more. So my goal is to prevent that heartburn on the seller's side, on our side, on the buyer's side, and try to find as many people as possible who are interested in this thing um, and push the price up. Um, but ultimately, the, the sellers are locked in. They know it's going to sell. It'll close without contingency in 30 days. Um, and that date certainty is a huge reason why people hire us. That's a big part of the tool. You know, you Timing. Guys, yeah, you yeah. have this... You know, as a realtor, this kind of ambiguous time frame of I hope it sells in the first six months. If it doesn't, you might be in it for the long haul. And so we have this tool that you can use as like an arrow in your quiver um, to deploy and and, uh, expedite, you know, the the timing of things, which is just as big as as the price. Oh, yeah. I mean, we wanted to highlight, I mean, this segment of the market in our in Maui, I mean, in Hawaii in general, right? Th- these are all second homes, third homes, sure. four homes, right? It's very discretionary purchase. Mm-hmm. So oftentimes the timeline is probably the most unknown variable for all of our seller clients, yeah. right? Yeah. They, you know, we, we do our best to identify value, which these are all one-offs, right? So it's subjective. 
But that timeline is something we really can't predict. No. There could be a billionaire on island this week. We put it on the market. They decide to go buy for a look, and they it's an impulsive purchase, right? Mm-hmm. That happens here. Sure. Uh, $20, $30 million impulsive purchase. Hard to believe. And but, even if you price it right, you um, don't know if it's going to sell. Right. Well, and that's the other side, right? Or so when? that could happen. Or it could sit on the market six months, 12 months, 18 months, right? I mean, there, our timelines are very uncertain here. So that's where I think you guys bring huge value is like, here's when it's going to sell. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so for, for the right people, that's huge. And, you know, when it comes to those dollars and cents in, in terms of time, you know, if you could sell a property today for $15 million versus in three years from now for $20 million, what's that $5 million worth over the course of three years? Yeah. It's exactly. probably more than $5 million. Yeah. So, you know, you have people think about that. And, of course, they want to get their number and feel like, you know, they, they, they came out on top. Right. Um, but uh, the ambiguity of timing is, is something that we sell. Like, that's the only thing on the earth that you cannot buy. Think of one other thing that you can't buy. The only one, in my mind, is time. Right. Yeah. You can't sure. buy one second, no matter how wealthy you are. For sure. So if you really distill it down, like, I sell time, which sounds like so... <laughs> It's philosophical time, and so it's kind of bullshitty, deep, deep. but like it's you know it's not untrue. No, no, no. It, it makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to shift gears a little bit. Let's dive into like nuts and bolts. So I'm a potential seller here in Maui. I own a you know gorgeous oceanfront property. We've tried to sell it a couple times on the market. Haven't quite found the right buyer. We're looking at you guys as an option. What are the kind of like? And you don't have to get real in the weeds, but like what are kind of the things I need to know? to make an educated decision on whether you're right solution for me or not. Yeah, sure. So uh, two things come to mind. I mean, the first is, what does it cost? Right. It costs nothing for a seller to hire us. Um, there's some other firms out there. It's not the same. you got to pay them a fee up front, 50 grand, something like that for marketing. I don't need that check. I'll write the check to myself. We're capitalized to the point where I don't need to make money on the $50,000 marketing fee. Right. I'll make money like a realtor in that if we sell it, we'll get paid. Yep. So no upfront fees, no cancellation fees. The buyer pays our fee in its entirety, which is kind of standard across the whole auction industry. So yeah. cars, art, jewelry, it's called the buyer's premium. Buyer pays that fee. And, and, and also, we don't set any other price aside from your current list price. So if this doesn't work out and you have to fire me, it's unfortunate, but your list price is the same as it was on day one. So you haven't told the market anything other than this is what I'm hoping to get from my property. Right. And the process is five weeks long. So a couple weeks of marketing, hopefully aggregate some bidders, register them, vet them, get a deposit from them, assuming the seller moves forward with the auction, which they don't have to. They have the right to cancel it before it happens. It happens sometimes. Hopefully it's rare, but it does happen. And those uh, cancellation rights are unconditional. Uh, But assuming they move forward, then we do this auction over the course of two weeks. And it's online and over the phone. Um, And at the end of the auction is really when all the bidding happens. I kind of liken it to a poker game where if the dealer says, flip your cards over, you got to flip them. But until that point in time, it's not advantageous for you to, to show your cards to anyone for any reason. So it's exciting over the last, you know, half an hour of the auction. Oh, yeah. Um, That's and, where the action and, is. Um, and then, the, you know, the beauty of it is it's all without contingency. So you get a 30-day closing. We do all this diligence beforehand, furnish it for buyers so they know what they're bidding on. And they close typically in cash in, in 30 days. Um, and they can use financing, but they typically don't. You know, yeah. for a lot of these properties, they're mostly cash. I'm not going to say you can't finance. Right. Um, but it's more expensive to than ever right now. For sure. And, uh, and most people will close in cash. So... That buyer, they win the auction, let's say. What um, what type of contractual obligation do they have? Well, they probably have to put down a deposit, right? Yeah. Is that in addition to their fee to bid? So it's a 100K deposit to get a bid card, okay. to be able to register to bid. So that's to be able to bid. Yeah, and then yep. a bank letter of some variety. Okay, so another verification of funds. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So they win the auction, they sign the purchase contract within 24 hours. Within two business days, they wire the remainder of a 12% earnest money deposit. Okay. 12%, got it. So say it's 10 million bucks, they owe 1.2 million, they've yep. got 100 grand up already, they wire the additional 1.1 1. 1. 1 million. Got it's it. hard, non-refundable. Okay. So the seller has pretty significant recourse. Oh, yeah. On he, 
he has that 1.1, 1.2 million yeah. now. Um, and, and also there's a specific performance clause in, in the contract. So this would go after this, the buyer for, for non-performance. Yep. And also contractually, they owe us our fee, our, our 12% buyer's premium. Right, right, right. So they don't really ever fall out of contract. I mean, extenuating circumstances like buyer gets diagnosed with terminal cancer a week after buying the property. Right. Something like that could happen in theory, whereas family does want to be saddled with the property and whatever. But that's a one-off situation. Yeah. So it's like 99% of the time they, they sell and close. Because the buyer knows that they're on the hook. Yeah. As, oh, yeah. as where it is. No, that's where great. Is. I mean, for a seller, just having that certainty after auction day, 30 days, you got a done deal, yeah. you know, in 99% of yep. cases, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you touched on that buyer premium, 12%. Is there, isn't there, there's like some incentive, right? If to get early bidders. Yeah. So the way we set the minimum bid, everyone wants to know like, what's the reserve price? What's yep. my minimum? Well, we don't set one. We offer a 50% discount on that fee. So 6% of the 12% to anyone who registers to bid before the auction starts. So say you put up a starting bid for a property at 10 million, you're gonna pay 6% on that 10 million instead of 12 million. Yeah. Say the auction starts and you win it for 15 million, you pay the full 12% only on the additional 5 million that you've bid. Got so you it. still save the so 600 percent grand on that right. initial $10 yeah, yeah, million yeah. Dollar bid. Yep, yep, yep. So 6 that's how you set of the your starting bid. Exactly. So that, that encourages activity before. Well, and yeah. it encourages that first bid price to be closer to where you think you're going to end up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I publish that more. range. That's so I'll tell people yeah, yeah. what they should think about. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, none of these sellers are distressed. Right. They want to sell. They don't have to sell. If you have to sell, I'm not your guy. For sure. You know, drop the price or do something drastic, but I'm not your guy. Um, and and so uh, that's that really is how we set a minimum, knowing that the seller doesn't have to sell. Mr. Buyer, put your best foot forward. Save yourself the most of this 6% that you can and tell the seller, okay, I'm here, I'm real. Of course I want a deal because everyone wants a deal on everything. I don't care what it is. Sure. Um, but I'm willing to commit to a number that you can feel okay about. You're probably not going to feel super stoked about it because it's not your best and final bid. Yeah. If you're a bidder and you sign up for an auction, are you going to commit to your highest and best offer the, before the auction ever begins? Probably not. Probably right. not. You're going to no. lowball. Yeah, not right. something that right. I see often. Right. So it's this nuanced kind of, hey, save some money, yeah. show the seller that you're real, don't bid against yourself too much, and let's get this auction going. Yeah. And you might have That's to good. bid it up another 50%, right. but you know that you put your best foot forward and the seller feels comfortable moving forward with the auction because we don't do any distress sales. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Very interesting process. And then the seller pays real estate commissions. You yep. know, that, that, that is one thing that will always hold true in our process. Right. Realtors are protected. Um, we work hand in hand with them on every single deal. So you get the benefit of the local expert, somebody you know, somebody you trust, someone who's going to manage the whole process, make sure this auction house is doing what they say they're going to do. Right. And I hold hands with you, you know, every single day for five weeks. Yeah. Um, and so, you, you know, you earn that commission. But it's protected, for and sure. so is the buyer's agent commission. So really, from a in. seller's perspective, you're still paying the same fee you would to a broker without using this tool. Yeah, the net sheet at the yeah. end of the day looks exactly the same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no different. So that's, I mean, that's amazing to bring such value at really no cost to the seller. Yeah, you I know, mean, it's... you know, the onus is on us to deliver yeah, results. For sure. And if we don't, fire me. Yeah, just like you'd fire a realtor. And you guys are losing, I mean, you know, on the failed auctions, you, you guys don't want to fail, right? I mean, you're losing pretty significant advertising dollars if you're going through this process mm -hmm. and you don't end up there. So there's a strong incentive on your part to, you know, to get it to the finish line. Yeah, I mean, my job is to not sign up any auction that I can. I could sign 50 pieces of business every month, right, but if right. 49 of them were flyers and I knew they weren't going to work. Yeah. I'm I'm not gonna be that I'm not gonna be that guy. I'd rather sign ten deals a year and sell all ten of them right. than sign twenty and sell eleven of them. Yeah. Because every failed auction is like, well, this doesn't work very well and you know, this seller didn't get what he wanted and their you know, their success percentage is only fifty percent. So I wanna make sure the client's just as good a fit right. for me as I am for them. Um, and sometimes I'll fire, fire clients and just like hey, you're not right, the property's not right for what we do. Thank you, but you know, we'll we'll pass. So yeah. Makes sense. Kind Absolutely. Pass, sniff test. That's a good good place to segue to, you know, I know you guys have done a lot of business in Hawaii. Let's hear about some successes around the state. Yeah. I mean, we kind of got our start in Hawaii in yeah. 2008, 2009. 
Um, so you know, Neil Norman is, is the number one realtor out here for a long time running. Older yeah, guy, Kawhi guy. Kawhi guy for sure. It's really forward thinking, you know, saw this concept and was like, oh, let me, you know, let me, let me see about that, get involved in it, see if we can do a couple deals. And now we've done probably 25 with him. So yeah. that, you know, that kind of track record has, has expanded out to the realtor community through the coconut wireless or whatever. And, sure. and people have said, okay, this works. Neil's doing it. You know, oh, let's yeah. give it a shot. So yep. we've had a couple of good successes, um, on on Maui, yep. the the islands of Kauai and the Big Island have historically been better to us for reasons that like I don't really understand. Yeah. I don't think it's anything specific other than the snowball effect of once you do one successful auction, yeah. you know there are more that yeah. that people are paying attention to and follow in its wake. For sure. Um, and and so we've sold some properties for twenty, thirty, forty million dollars over on Kauai. These big fat yep. oceanfront parcels and, and Hanalei Bay. Um, yeah. Um, and you know, kind of billionaires row up there to people like Zuckerberg and yep. and and Ellison and, and all those tech moguls. Um, and then in the resorts on the Big Island in Kukio and Hawaii oh, yeah. and and down in Kona and and um, up in Hululoa, uh, Manalani, all those resorts. So it really it's it's a great product for high end vacation homes themselves for because sure. there's a big buyer pool of people who want those in Hawaii. Right. Um, and so uh, you know, a lot of the top realtors have relied on us for these these tough to sell properties and some of them you know i've sold recently like pretty close to list price yeah. or some version of a previous list price right right um so the goal of course is to try to get the highest price possible frankly i don't care about a, a, achieving an arbitrary price as long as the client's happy yeah at the end of the day i'm not here to set records um, i'm here to make sure that clients you know are getting what they want yeah um, and so that's been, you know, it's been really great on Big Island and, uh, and Kauai. And, and Oahu is just tough because I think culturally, especially with a lot of Japanese buyers, right. they're not comfortable with the transparency of an auction. Yeah. Yep. Was, yep. It's just not their vibe, yeah. um, which is fine. Right, um, right, right. And, and so that, you know, that market we've had some success in, but we've probably done 25, 30 auctions on Kauai successfully and the yeah. same number on the Big Island and yeah. um, maybe five or 10 on Maui yeah. since our yeah, inception. Yeah, I think that's about right. Yep, yep. So I bet we've sold, yeah, 50, maybe 75 properties total in the state of Hawaii, you know, since our inception. It's a couple per year. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, you know, the, the right property and, and the right seller, it, it all comes together and, and it's a great success. And, and so, you know, I hopefully that will continue in the wake of this auction in McKenna yeah, because, sure. you know, with the market potentially deteriorating or slowing down because of geopolitics or whatever, I th you know, I think there's someone that needs what we do when they realize it is, is up to them. But for sure, that probably happens in the coming months more so than than others. Yeah, and I like what you touched on as far as, like, determining, you know, the value at the time because, you know, oftentimes the owners of these properties may think of a, a pretty lofted number, right? Sure. But they always say, like, you know, how you determine the real value is you get the most qualified exposure, most qualified bidders in one place at one time, let them battle it out, yep. and then you have your market value at the end, right? Yeah. So I, I think, you, you know, it's... It's how you get that to the finish line, and I, I just, you know, I think it's a great product, great tool. It works for the yeah. right person. I mean, yeah. I won't say it's without pitfalls. Yeah. You know, everything sure. has risk. The risk of a traditional listing is you list it, it doesn't sell, it sits on the market, it gets stale. Yeah. You drop the price three times, you fire your realtor, you hire another one, you drop the price again, you're still back at square one. Yep. You have nothing to show for it. And so the risk is you have that, you know, that ambiguity about what's going to happen. The risk with an auction is I know when it's going to sell, but I don't know what it's going to sell for. Right. And, and we can mitigate that to a degree, but nothing's perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect process. So it's, it's kind of like you got to be somewhat risk tolerant, where if you're the guy that says, Jack, I'm listed at 20 million, I'll never take a dollar less than 19.5 ever. Like respect, but I'm not your guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's great if you can do that. But uh, if, the, if the property doesn't sell and, and you've done everything that you can, this is a good option. You know, it's not option A for anyone ever, and that's fine. Right. But uh, you know, option B, it's option B, it's it's effective. Right. Yeah. Right. No, and I think you, you hit it on the head with you know, not every seller is realistic, right? And you that's your job probably. That that's one of your probably primary roles is yeah. You meet with these potential clients, you you feel out you know value and 
where you think the demand is, and then you make a decision on whether it's a good partnership or not. Yeah. And that's that's huge. I mean, that's what we have to do all the time. Or just with it helps to have feedback. All. You know, it helps you know? to have lots of buyers coming through. So if I do one of these campaigns, we'll probably have 20 showings. Right. And I'll ask the tough questions to these people. Like, do you like it? Are you qualified? What do you think it's worth? Yeah. And I'll pass that straight back to the seller because yeah, it's not a reflection sure. on me. It's no. a reflection on what a qualified buyer said the market said perception. To you. Yeah, what's yeah. the perception? Right. So it's like my dad had the saying when I was a kid, um, if one person tell you, tells you you have a tail, you can ignore them. If two people tell you have a tail, you can ignore them. If three people tell you have a tail, you have a tail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like so that. it's like you can apply that to anything, yeah. real estate included. Um, and so it's, you know, if you're willing to listen. To that if you're open to a range of, of, of outcomes dictated by the market which is three or four or five qualified people that want what you're selling then we'll get a good value and you'll be happy but it's gonna be uncomfortable for you for a month <laughs> exactly right <laughs> and uh, you know having such success in Hawaii I'm sure coming out here to enjoy our amazing climate and place is not a bad thing not a bad job perk no I, right? I feel pretty spoiled you get to stay at pretty sweet place right now yeah yeah, yeah. I, you know I, I don't usually get to stay at the property that oh, i'm selling um yeah, and, sure. and i try not to like mix any sort of business with pleasure right um but the whole thing is just you know it's super professional where i'm like i'm here to do a job yeah. and if i can for go sure. lie on the beach you know on saturday mornings like great yeah um well there's value in being on the property you know, yeah, because I get to know it and that's feel right, it, right, like, right. and you know, understand like the mana and the energy and like what the best parts of the property are and the oh, nuances. Yeah. So I think it's really smart for a seller to kind of suggest that. And if you're not in residence, it's it's pretty easy. Um, for sure. So yeah, I feel like I know that property like the back of my hand now, and I'm going to be sad to leave it on August 16th. I'm sure. Afterwards, <laughs> not a bad place to be. Yeah, but it, it really helps you sell it because you've experienced it, you've kind of lived it. Um, and I've done that all over the world. So, yeah, I feel feel very spoiled to do it and seeing some of the best real estate. This is one of the best pieces of real estate I've I've seen, certainly, that I've ever stayed on. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, it's McKenna. Like, it's, you know, you think about all the different unique dynamics of Hawaiian islands. There's nothing like Wailea and McKenna. Yeah. Um, the, just the resort feel, the beaches, the weather, the lack of wind, the True. access, um, the, you know, the, the homes on it, how lush and green it is. Like, there's, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it on Kauai or Oahu, the big island. And, you know, and you could say the same about the Kona Coast on the Big Island. Like, there's nothing like it. You have an oasis resort in the middle of a lava field. Like, right. there's nothing like that anywhere else. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's uh, cool. So I understand soon. why people want to be here and, and, you know, they're coming to you to buy their dream home because South Maui is, is where it's at. And if we got to twist your arm to get you out on the golf course Saturday morning, <laughs> you know, you might oblige. So you're not going to have we'll to see, twist too we'll, much. We'll see if we get out there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, the, it's, it's a joy to be able to go and have fun and play some of the best golf in, in the world. And I'm certainly spoiled when it comes to that, but I pinch myself every time I get to go out and, and whack it around with, with people who become friends that I get to do business with also. That's right. Yeah. That's what it's all about, man. Yeah. We're stoked to see what happens. Uh, down there on McKenna Road. Yeah. And, um, appreciate you coming on. And, of course. Um, yeah. Yeah. Great time chatting with you, Jack. Thanks, guys.